Okay, so as I told you from today's lecture, we are going to start unit number two. So that is the concept of backtracking. The unit number two, the main concept is backtracking. So actually, uh, you will find this backtracking concept is used in many problem in computer engineering. So few problem we'll discuss in this unit where we can use a backtracking. But before to start uh, to discuss with the problem and we try to understand the backtracking with the problem, we can understand this backtracking concept with one example. In our daily life also, we use this backtracking many times based on the problem. So actually to understand this concept, I have uh, considered the example of maze. Maze, do you know what is meant by maze? Maze means bulbuleya, right? In our recreation garden, you might have seen the maze in which once you enter, you will have to exit at the another end, okay? So I am creating very simple maze here. Okay, so this is a maze. Hmm? So this is the entry point and this is the exit point. Okay, so might have seen this kind of maze. Hmm? So, so for this maze, we can create a multiple junction point. Okay, so this is the one junction point and this is the second junction point. And this one could be the third junction point, right? Where you have to take a decision. Okay. So suppose uh, you enter from this point and you reach to junction point one, right? So at here, you have to take two uh, either you have, to, there is a two points are there, either up or down. So you have to choose one point, okay? So two things are there, down and up, okay? So from the down and up, you have to choose one. So suppose uh, at the initially you have chosen down, Okay, from the down, you reach to the second junction point. Okay, so at the second junction point, you will try to exit. By the, again, you have to take two decisions, either up or right side, right? So from the down, there are two decisions are there, either up or at the, you can move right side. Okay, so first you might have taken decision that is up, up. But from this point, you cannot exit. It is closed. Okay. So you, what you have to do here, you need to backtrack again to at the second junction point, right? So you backtrack at the second junction point, and then you have taken another decision to move at the right side. So you move at the right side, and again you find found that uh, again it is closed. You cannot exit from this point. So what you have to do again, you, so from the downside, you have taken two decision either up and the right, but still you did not get the exit point. What you can do, you can backtrack and move to the previous junction point that is one. So again, you move to the one and you have chosen up junction point, okay? So from the up, again, you reach to the junction point number three. So when you reach point number three, again, you have to take a decision. Either at the, you can move at the left side or at the right side, okay? So at the left side, you move. So in up, you move at the left side. So you will find there is no exit point. Again, you backtrack and then you move at the right side, okay? So 
when you move at the right side you got the exit point okay so here you can understand how you got the path how you got the path so the correct path is junction point 1 then up and then right so in this way one up and right you get the solution right so this is one solution so here in the maze example many time we have to backtrack until and unless you are not getting solution we have to backtrack and you have to find out the another solution right so the same way so this maze example you can apply for the number of problems so same analogy that you have to remember what we are doing here we are finding out we are getting multiple choices we are choosing one choice and then we are trying to find out the solution if we are not getting a solution we backtrack and again we find a solution for the another choice right this is the concept of backtracking i hope all you could understand the concept of backtracking the same thing you can understand with the pseudo code right so in the pseudo code uh, we can write the pseudo code for the maze example actually what we are doing like the function is what the main function is the backtrack okay so this is a backtrack function for the junction point right backtrack for the junction point and then if so if you backtrack and if it is exit if it is exit then what you will do you will simply return a true for the solution return true for the solution or you will have to find out the multiple path so for each junction point or for each direction of junction so for each direction of junction what we have to do we have to check if backtrack and then next junction return true return true or if you did not get the solution return false now we can understand this pseudo code here actually what we are doing at initially when you enter into the uh, first we will check it may happen in the maze you enter at one side and you exit at the another side immediately you got the solution so if it, you enter and you exit you will return a true right but if it is not exit then what we have to do we have to check each and every direction so for each direction of junction suppose at one you enter obviously at in our example here in our example you enter here from the one side and you directly you cannot exit right multiple junction point is there so you have taken a decision to move at the downside so at the second junction point so for each junction direction of junction so up and the right for each direction of junction will check for the exit point but if you did not find the exit point then what we will do backtrack so if backtrack then what we will do we'll check for the next junction point all the direction so we will continue this until and unless you will get the exit point and once you get the exit point we return a true but it may happen there is a maze uh, kind of in the example there is no exit point in that case it will after checking all the direction it will return a false so this is a simple pseudo code and this pseudo code we can apply in a different problem to understand to solve our problem with the backtracking okay So, in uh, to understand this concept, the number of problems are given in your syllabus. 
So I will try to cover two problems in today's lecture. One is permutation and the second one is yen queen problem. Okay. So the permutation. So with the we can solve this permutation problem with the concept of backtracking. So the problem is, for example, given a string, print all permutation of the string. So this is the problem. And this problem we have to solve with the concept of backtracking. So what is the concept? In a, you have a one string is given and we have to find out all the permutation. So suppose the string is, for example, given like A, B and C, what will be the different permutation for the A, B, C, right? It could be the A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, again, C, B, A, and C, A, B, right? So this could be the different permutation for the A, B, C. Similarly, if the A and D is given, what could be the different permutation for A and D string? So A, D and D, A, right? These are the per these are different permutations. We can find out from the string. So what is a permutation is actually, permutation is a rearrangement of element. So only the order is changing. So A, B, C, three elements are there. So they are only the, you will find their order is only changing, right? So uh, if the three elements are there, so how many different combinations you will find that is a three factorial for the three element three factorial like three into two into one. So the total number of combinations are three into two six into one six. So six combinations. So here you will find one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the same way if you are for the two factorial. So two factorial, it would be two into one. So the total combination is two. So for A and D, the two characters are there. So the total different combination would be the two, right? So here uh, we have to rearrange all the characters. So suppose there is a three elements are there n number of elements are there. So how many different combination uh, can be created? So for the three element, for A, B, C, what it mean? What it mean? We have to arrange this character at this specific position. So A, B, C, right? Or B, A, C or C, A, B. The multiple combination can be there. Right? So at the first position, suppose if I am putting A and I am making it fix, okay? So from A, B, C, I make N. So A fix here. So how many characters will be remaining? That is B and C. So for B and C, that is how many characters are remaining? That is N minus 1. N minus 1, that means B and C is remaining. So suppose you fix here B. So now how many characters remaining? Now only the one character is remaining. So how many? That is N minus 2. So C, right? So here actually, uh, how many different combination can be created? That is, we can use the formula that is uh, n minus one, n into n minus, n into n minus one, uh, n plus n minus one plus n minus two plus n minus three that dash dash up to the one divided by n factorial. This kind of formula we can create. Check the number of permutation combination. Now the question arises, what is the use of backtracking here? When actually we are using the backtracking. So you can understand, like we have seen the number of combination. Okay, so A, B, and C. So what actually, you compare the same example with our maze analogy. In maze analogy, what we are doing, once you enter and reach to the junction point, you have to take a decision, either up or 
down either up or down similarly here we have to find out the multiple combination in permutation we have to rearrange character and we have to find out the multiple combination right so what is the difference in the maze example and here in this example in the maze example we are looking for the exit point exit point and our, we get, got the solution but here we have to find out multiple solution right so to get the multiple solution just a minute So here actually, how actually we can use a backtrack here. Now, for example, A, B, C, the three characters are there. First thing, what we have to do, we have to fix one by one character. Okay. So the first thing we'll do, swap A with A. So here, when you will swap, swap A with A, means A is fixed now here. Now B and C two characters are remaining, right? So uh, again, we'll find out the so the, the second time what we will do we will swap b with the b so now a b is fixed and we get the this one solution that is a b c combination a b c combination now what we will do we all the three characters we got out of two characters are fixed and only one is remaining so we got the solution that is a b c the complete string is there and this is the one combination that we found in our maze example we exit our execution and once you get got the solution but here now we will not exit the our execution what we will do we will backtrack and uh, again we'll swap b with the c so when you will swap B with the C, swap B with the C, you will get the next solution. That is, so when you will swap, then A and C, you got the two characters, which is fixed, and we got the second solution. That is A, C, B. Now we, all the three characters are utilized. We got the second string. We found the solution. Again, what we will do, we will backtrack and again we'll found we will fix the second character okay so second character is b and we make a b is fixed here now so swap a with b so here after swapping a with b b and that first position we fix b and again swap a with a so now B and A is fixed now. So remaining is C. So we got the third solution. That is B, A, C. Again, we backtrack and again swap A with the C. So after swapping A with the C, B and C is fixed. A is remaining. So we got the fourth solution, the fourth combination that is B, C, A. Again, we found a solution. We'll backtrack. Again, we'll backtrack and swap A with the C. So after swapping A with the C, we got another different combination that is C, B, A. Now we'll make two characters fixed. So that's why B swap with the B. So C, B, A. So the fifth combination we found. Again, we backtrack and then swap B with A. And the finally, we got the sixth combination that is C, A, B.
So CA is fixed and the next one is B. So now the count is so three, so three factorial is six. Total number of six combination we found. Now we exit the loop and we get the multiple permutations here. So here you could understand how we can solve this uh, problem with the concept of backtracking. Just a minute. So, here you will find, uh, if you search on internet, you will get the multiple solution for this problem. Just a minute. Like you will uh, easily find this backtracking concept as well as this program implementation. You will find this program is very small and the same uh, logic you can apply here. And the same program is available in C++, C, Java, Python, C, Hash, PHP. In any programming language you can use. You want, the most important thing is to understand the logic. Okay, so you apply this logic on this code, it is very simple. Uh, and you can choose any programming language, but the important thing is you should get the solution. So you, you can use a Python, the program is very small and you can you will get the output. So what you will have to do, you will have to run this, choose any programming language and you have to run this program, okay? And one by one, even you can choose C and by the debugging, you can understand how you are getting a output, okay? One after another. So because of the time limitation, I cannot explain you one by one line, but you can do, you can by debugging, you can understand one by line, how actually you are getting the permutations, the different combinations with the help of backtracking, okay? So we'll discuss the next concept that is the yen queen problem. Okay, so wait a minute. Okay, so all you know, what is a yen queen? How actually it moves? So by with the help of this backtracking concept, we have to, I want to discuss with you the yen queen problem. So in chessboard, you know how actually yen, uh, the queen moves. So the queen is there. So the queen can move either uh, at, the, at the front, back, right? Horizontal, horizontally anywhere and inclined, right? In all direction, the queen can move, right? You know the queen, uh, Raja and Wajir. The many people in Hindi, many we say the Wajir, right? Raja and Vajir. So Vajir, that is the queen, right? So it can move any direction. That is the most important player. Whenever we play the chess, that time we try to protect always a queen or the Vajir, right? So what is the problem? The yen queen problem. So you have a yen queen, okay? And you have to place this yen queen on yen by yen board. Okay, so yen queen are there and you have to place this yen queen on yen by yen board such that no two queens can attack each other. So the problem, I hope you could understand. 
So we'll see, for example, you have yen by yen board. Okay. So this is a one kind of board is there. Okay. So this is one type of board is there. And what we have to do, you have to We have to place a queen here, yen queens here on yen by yen board, such a that no two queens can attack each other. So here, yen by yen, how many so size is four by four, right? So how many queens we have to set here? Four queens we have to set, such a that no two queens attack on each other. So for example, Q1, I place here. Now Q1, so the Q1 can attack on this field, right? Horizontally, as well as vertically, as well as this inclined, okay? This portion, right? So this is the attacking area for the queen Q1. So accordingly, we have to set four queens here so that no two queen, no any queen attack on any another queen. Okay, so Q1 queen here, Q1, uh, where I can place a Q2. So this is a Q2 queen. Suppose I place this Q2 queen here, obviously Q1 will not attack on Q2, right? Then the third queen, now what is the portion, the Q2 area? Q2 area is this one, this horizontally, and for the Q2 it is right, as well as this much. This is the attacking area for the Q2 queen. So where we can place a Q3 queen, so here is the portion where I can place Q3 queen, right? So Q3 queen, again the attacking area for the Q3 queen is this, right, horizontally and at inclined side right this is the attacking area so where i can place a q4 queen i can place q4 queen here so q1 q2 q3 and q4 i have placed all these queen in yen by yen board such a way no any queen attacking on any other queen right so this is the problem so we have to solve this problem with the help of backtracking concept. But I think our time is over now. It is up to 145, na? Okay, so I have to stop here. But uh, in next lecture, we'll discuss this yen queen problem. How we can solve this yen queen problem with the backtracking okay so meanwhile you have assignment you have to uh, imp run this uh, permutation example already it is available on internet with multiple languages so you choose any programming language and debug the program and you understand this backtracking concept and we'll discuss many types of problem with with uh, the backtracking okay thank you now the time is over now you can leave the meeting thank you